Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. We should have a good one on tap here today. It's the Dolphins coming in at 3-4, and four, going up against the Jets, who come in at 1-7. and seven. With that, let's get you out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. They've got the call of this Week 9 matchup. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Sunshine State in one of America's finest cities, Miami, Florida. Today, it's a Week 9 matchup set to go here between the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Now they try the right side here. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. It's a gain of three, and it sets him up with second and just two yards to go. And on your screen, the offensive starters, Jarvis Landry, a guy that we profile. Love his game. Not only is he going to beat you with athleticism, he's going to outwork you as well and look for him to hurt you also in the kick return game. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. So the offense has it first and ten. They go play action here on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. And the defense for New York. David Harris is a playmaker, an inside linebacker, and also one of the most durable guys in the league. Ten yards still left on second down. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Looks for Parker, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, David Harris. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Here's Matt Forte with his first carry. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. A look at the starting side for the offense and Brandon Marshall. I think the thing that impresses me most about Brandon Marshall is his strength how he runs his routes, how he wins against defensive backs downfield, how it's so tough to keep him from getting the football. First carry for Matt Forte. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. And there they went blitz defensively, Charles, and things were paved well coming from the linebacker position. I love the way that you described it, paved well. Oftentimes, the guy who gets home on the blitz, he's going to get all the credit. But his teammates did all the dirty work, right? They ran into people on purpose. They sometimes tugged on Drews. Now Fitzpatrick hit. It's out. He lost the football. And plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. 
because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. So now here come the Dolphins. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Second down following the run. They come up in an offset eye. The throw on second down is Tannehill. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Third and two, Tannehill. And he's got his man. That's Landry. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. It fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic. So anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even add a little extra to the end with a short run. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And they'll lose a yard that time. And that's going to lead to a third down. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And it's caught by Parker. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. The goal of every offense is to move the chains, pick up first downs. A nice job finding an open receiver for a completion. And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll come out in the pistol. On first down, it's Tannehill. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Yeah, the Jets, D, they call on a couple extra defensive backs on third. Out of the gun, Tannehill going deep here for Parker. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And New York set to take the field. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. 
So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves Jack that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. On second down, Forte. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. And give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, Look out. Here they come after the quarterback. And they pick up the first down there with a gain of four. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now a play fake here on first down. And got his man complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback. So they got their assignments down, Pat, and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. On first and ten, Fitzpatrick. He's going to let it go again. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked by the rookie, Xavier Howard. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And the Dolphins offense now ready to go back out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Here's Tannehill now on second down. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. Jarvis Landry. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Jarvis Landry, his second touchdown on the season. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. And nothing too crazy there. A quick slant, and then he just had a seat. He found a seat. And when you hit it on the run like that, and I mean the pass right to the receiver who's already in motion and moving, sometimes he just takes and runs away from everyone else. And he ran it into the end zone. And the defense, they've got to adjust there quickly. That's tough on them. That's really tough because everything was executed well. Balls out of his hands quickly, into the hands of the receiver, and then he was gone. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And the Jets set to take the field. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. <laughs> they start on the ground with Forte, and he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? Ball start's going to push him back, but these days, how hard must it be to be an offensive lineman? It's very hard, Brandon. You've got defensive linemen flinching, trying to draw you off sides. You've got the loud crowds, and there are just so many super athletic players on defense now that you have to deal with each week. But through it all, these guys just sit in there for four quarters and slug it out. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. 
I keep hearing all this chatter about what Matt Forte is going to bring to an offense. Well, we know he can do a little bit of everything. He did that in Chicago. A little bit different than Chris Ivory, especially in catching the football. And you reminded me of the stat from a couple years ago, 102 catches when he was in Chicago in 2014. Look out, New York. This guy wearing Jets green and white. He's ready to go. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Jelani Jenkins coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it'll be fourth down. Here's Ryan Quigley now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And there's a flag on the field. Fielded at the 20. Oh, and you just can't do that. 15 yards on the roughing the kicker call. Absolutely inexcusable. The kicker's in a defenseless position, and he just gets taken out. Now the offense lining up first and ten. A first down throw for Fitzpatrick. And he will find his man on the outside. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. First down, Fitzpatrick. And that's complete to the right side. It's Marshall. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. It'll be a gain of nine, and it'll be second and about a yard. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. They go back to the ground attack here. It's Forte. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Marshall, the lone receiver on the left side. Fitzpatrick now to throw on first down. Trying to lay one up deep. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. On second down, Fitzpatrick again. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The you got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Fitzpatrick sets up the screen to Forte. It'll be a gain of four. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. He dialed up the screen pass on third down. And for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together. And they had a chance to pick up a first down. But the defense got there and finished it off. So on comes a field goal unit for the Jets. Here's Nick Folk. This from 54 yards away. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And they'll run it. 
down here. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Coach handed to us, and we may see some old power football here in this game. We got a taste of it on that first down run. I love how he handed it to us. And then when we were watching practice, we were watching what they call inside drill with the offensive and defensive line. And they kept putting more defenders on the other side and saying, block that. I don't care how many guys are in there. I want to run the football this week. And boy, it has paid off for them in this game. Playing as a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Third down and three. So a pause here for us as well. Time to pay some bills. We'll come back to Miami after this. Another pistol look here. Tannehill on third down. And he hits the tight end. It's Deion Sims. It goes as a game to six, and it's a first down. Now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Fresh set of downs here. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's going to fight his way forward here. Now the Jets are going to burn another timeout. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. On second down, here's Tannehill. Penalty marker is down here. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Second down is Tannehill. Going back to Lander. This time he's got him complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. Now hang on here. Timeout called. Timeout called by the defense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. They come out five wide. Three of them to the right side. From the red zone now, Tannehill. And throw right side complete to Parker. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Here's Tannehill now on second down. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Jarvis Landry, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Dolphins are able to grow their lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Set to return, here's Raheem Mostert. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now the Jets' offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus-yard field goal that they missed. 
And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. To throw is Fitzpatrick. Taking a shot here for Marshall. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Well, partner, I guess that answers the question about whether they're going to sit on it or not. <laughs> it does. Now we'll see if they try that again. Yeah, I think what we find on plays like that, when you take that shot, if you're unsuccessful, then you go way more conservative to finish the half, you know? I think that's the way they'll go. It's a gain of nine yards, and that'll bring up fourth down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Now the Dolphins are going to halt the action here. It's a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets it away, and it's a laser headed for the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. On first down, it's Tannehill, and that's complete. It sends, and they'll get him down up past the 15. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Gardner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. That's all, Larry. So much for the halftime report. We'll see in the postgame. We're ready to get to the third quarter. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Now Fitzpatrick. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Quincy Anoon with the intended receiver, and it'll make it a second down. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. And he's brought down. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. First down, Fitzpatrick. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. The 
Fitzpatrick again. And he'll find his man on the out route. That's Marshall. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at it and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. They go play action here on first down. Right back for Marshall. This time it's complete. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. And when an offense is doing a nice job selling the play action pass, a lot of responsibility shifts to the linebackers. They're the ones that have to determine run or pass and get to the proper places on the field. Again, we'll see the pistol here. On first down, this is Forte. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Fitzpatrick now on second down. And that's complete to the right side. It's Marshall. And he'll go down at the 28. Call it a gain of five. And just like that, it's third down. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Fitzpatrick sets up the screen to Forte. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Forte, the lone running back. Here's Fitzpatrick. And he's got his man on the out route. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to lead to a third down. Oh, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Here's Fitzpatrick. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Matt Forte, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Jets are able to make this a close game again. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. Again, we'll see the pistol here. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner, and the tackle was there right away for a loss of yardage. behind the chains here a touch on second and 11. Tannehill. And over the middle, this is Parker. And he's brought down. A really nice pickup of 14 yards and it moves the sticks. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. 
Now a handoff here to his running back. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. A couple of Jets there in on the stop. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. He gets it to Sims, complete. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. And he'll go on the ground. And he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Now they'll run it on the toss. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. Time running out here on the play clock. They run the counter now on first down. And able to work his way down to the 16. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, okay, we got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big-time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable. They come up in an offset on. And he'll give it here to his running back. They were stopped on that play. He's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. here on first down and that is incomplete he was looking to get it to Jarvis Landry that time and that'll make it second and ten so the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead but now here third quarter maybe go to the run game a little more yeah perhaps I mean after that incompletion a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall now Tannehill, and that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Well, sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. They're the ones keeping things going. They have to continue to play at that level. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And now another one thrown incomplete. Back now in Miami. It's Dolphin football. It's also Dolphin lead to begin quarter number four. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Frank's kick is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to seven. So a big one there is that gives them a little cushion. And you know, here in the fourth quarter, the fact that they were able to bleed some time off the clock and put points on the board, even if it's only three, that could turn out to be the drive that ultimately wins them the game. Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. This one fielded at the five. 
And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The New York set to take the field. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. He was looking for Quincy and Nunwa that time, and that'll make it second and ten. Offense still needing ten yards. Second down. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And all the way down to the 22-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 54 yards. So here we go, first and 10 now. Fitzpatrick now to throw on first down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. My high school coach John Ford used to say all the time, if you're in a bad situation, laddie, don't compound it with a bad decision as well. And I think that's what we just saw there. Harassed in the pocket, and he throws into double coverage anyway. He called you laddie? He called me laddie, and that was the nicest thing he called me. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Fitzpatrick to throw it. Over the middle to Smith. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Second down following the incompletion. Now Fitzpatrick. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. He was looking for the tight end Lance Kendricks there. And that is going to set up third and goal. They got to have six here. It's third and goal. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. Completed pass brings up a fourth down situation. Do you play analytics on this one? Well, you know, what do your analytics tell you about going for it here? I wonder what they would say. They tell me you're down by this margin, fourth quarter. You're going. All right, so you needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal then maybe not exactly what they wanted, but it's a necessary first step. Still plenty of time remaining, but you could really use a stop defensively after the kickoff, preferably a three and out. After the made field goal back out is Nick Folk to kick this one off. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And out come the Dolphins now. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Three, eighty, zebra, zebra, dagger, dagger. Blue, ten. Blue, ten. 
And the play clock's running down. Tannehill, and he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. It's an eight-yard pickup, and they're going to have a third down. And three full yards here for the offense to get on third down. winding down. Here's Tannehill. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Jarvis Landry, the intended receiver, and it'll be fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is brought in at the 21. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. And New York set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to... Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. It's the fourth. Seahawk Byron Maxwell. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Gonna give this time to the tailback. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Watch 84. Watch 84. Hey, A handoff as they run the counter play. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because then you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Tannehill. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Marcus Williams. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Following the interception here, Fitzpatrick. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. They'll give him eight on the play, and it'll be second down. Seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. On first and ten, Fitzpatrick. 
And that's complete to the right side. It's Marshall. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 11 yards on the pickup. And that leads to a New York first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked by the rookie, Xavier Howard. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I hear my old college coach right now. He used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. But they're... Now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. running back and he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14 pretty good running there nine yards sets up a third and one and that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut and he's a guy that has some height to him so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash makes it a lot easier to stay upright see the field and make a run as we just saw there and he will have the first down here as he's up to the 15. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination of whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result, because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move to influence the defensive front to go in that direction and create the space back in the other side and block it appropriately. But you're exactly right. Didn't move him, sat there waiting for him and made the play. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Fielded at the 33. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50. First and 10. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Right, right, right. 
They'll look to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise there in the dime. He's back to throw. Right back for Marshall. This time it's complete. Give him 18 yards on that one. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. And that's going to make it fourth down. Oh, he didn't spike it. He faked it. He's got time in the pocket. The Jets try it, but the fourth down play doesn't work. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. And the Dolphins getting set to go here. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So, kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it. It's what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. Tannehill to a knee, and that ought to be the final act of this ball game. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And Charles, when you pull out a close game, the good thing about that is maybe next time you're in a nail-biter in the fourth quarter, you have a little more confidence. Yeah, you're talking about your memory muscles, right? When you win those close ones, you have that confident feeling that you can continue to do so every time you're in that position. Now, that said, you would rather win by 60 points, or do you like the close ones, too? Well, I think everyone would rather win by 60. It's comfortable. Everyone gets to play. But when you win those nail-biters, dinner tastes just a little bit better that night. So for Miami, they'll finish the first half of the schedule dead even at 4-4. Four and four. And they will hit the road next week to take on the San Diego Chargers. Meanwhile, for the Jets, the difficult season continues as they drop to 1-8. and eight. And they'll have a chance at redemption next week at home against the Los Angeles Rams. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Dolphins are winners here as we say so long from South Florida.